For the retrospective on Italian Western cinema, the Venice Festival of International Cinema pays tribute to the spaghetti western made in Italy during the 1960s and 70s with an exhibition of black and white pictures taken on location by the set's photographers. The Italian western was different from those of Hollywood in one fundamental way. The American westerns were optimistic. The hero always wins, justice is served. In fact, in the morning when the hero opens his window, he sees an endless horizon full of promise and a better life. In the Italian West, the protagonist opens his window with fear and trepidation because he knows that either the sun will warm his face or that just might be the morning he takes a bullet between the eyes. He lives in a sunburnt wasteland of cruelty, hardship, and injustice. Wild West frontier towns centered around the general store, the livery stable, and the jailhouse. The saloon, grinding way with wild piano music, girls, or more accurately, prostitutes. Poker, drinking, brawling, and shooting. It's where life has no value. There is no refuge in this isolated landscape. Everyone lives lives built on quicksand. Their greed, anger, rage all become transforming elements, distorting and deforming the personality of the characters. It's the catalyst for their crimes, their passions, and their violence. When two men face each other down a deserted street, there will inevitably be a showdown. The hero wears a white hat while the villain wears a black hat. Huh. This isn't Hollywood. This is the spaghetti western. If the hat is white, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's good. In fact, no one was good and their faces read like a map of their angry and tormented lives, the sun bearing testimony to each of their sins by branding their face with cracks and lines. Their faces straight out of a Caravaggio painting, with a pistol in hand and facing adversaries that are willing to do anything for a fistful of dollars. They were gunslingers, bounty hunters, sidewinders, opportunists and thieves, claim jumpers, rustlers, and scoundrels, all of them. On a typical Saturday afternoon at the theater, it might start out like this. The film is Django. The music swells, and we are transported, blurred and out of focus by blinding sun, and intense heat rising in waves from the arid waste. The desert, where holy men are cleansed and strengthened, and sinners are punished. The vast landscape becomes more than a vivid backdrop. It becomes a living character in the film. The camera slowly zooms in on a solitary figure. He comes into focus. It is a man, a man dragging a coffin behind him. Saint? Sinner? We'll find out soon enough, but one thing is for sure. The empty coffin that he's dragging behind him will find an occupant soon enough. This is the hero. He is a lonely and proud man, and his pride is in that you'll treat him like a proud man, or be sorry that you ever saw him at all. He talks as a man of his age talks, with rude wit, a lively sense of the grotesque, a disgust for sham, and a contempt for pettiness. The story is his adventure in search of truth, and it would be no adventure at all if it didn't happen to a man fit for adventure. He has a range of awareness that startles you, but it belongs to him by right, because it belongs to the world he lives in, a world where guns and wits and sometimes dynamite are his everyday tools of survival. The Spaghetti Western share a vision and sensibility indicated by their echoing titles. Titles like The Ruthless Four, Let's Go Kill, The Violent Breed, Every Man for Himself, The Hills Run Red, Desperado, Hour of Death, The Mercenary, Death Rides a Horse, Three Amens for Satan, Bounty Killer, No Room to Die, Vengeance is a Dish Best Eaten Cold, and If You Meet Sartana, Pray for Your Death. These evocative titles conjure up a dark, violent world of feuds, greed, revenge, and death. Spaghetti Western mania gripped the entire world, not just the Italian public, with kids able to pull a gun with a Clint Eastwood squint from New York to New Delhi, and Rome, Italy, to Rome, Texas. The films are directed by directors like Sergio Leone, Tinto Brasso, Damiano Damiani, Dario Argento, Enzo Castellari, Sergio Corbucci, also working with talent like Clint Eastwood, Lee Marvin, James Coburn, Orson Welles, Henry Fonda, Lee Van Cleef, Klaus Kinski, Jack Palance, Gian Maria Volante, Claudia Cardinale, Eli Wallach, Franco Nero, Terence Hill and Bud Spencer, Johnny Garco, and Giuliano Gemma. Spaghetti Westerns were characterized by the presence of more action and violence than their Hollywood cousins. In fact, often one Italian Western will exhaust more ammunition than 30 years of John Ford. 
The best known, perhaps, archetypal spaghetti westerns were the Man With No Name trilogy, comprised of A Fistful of Dollars for a Few Dollars More and The Good and the Bad and the Ugly, directed by Sergio Leone, starring the then TV actor Clint Eastwood with musical score by Ennio Morricone, all of whom are now synonymous with the genre. Between 1963 and 1974, Italy was undergoing a revolution. How else could we define the birth of a genre that so completely changed the cinematic language of the period, fashion and production models, and that now, 40 years later, still manages to produce new cinema. Without the spaghetti westerns, a large part of Italian cinema would not exist, and Hollywood would never be the same.